Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan. He's a corgi, and this is another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And today we're continuing our discussion of the botanical animal, animal essences, and flower essences. And today we're talking about sibling rivalry. This is a flower essence I've personally used quite often, and I have uh, suggested it to many, many people who have had good success with it. And as the name says, sibling rivalry is for jealous behavior and competitiveness. And the longer description says that sibling rivalry helps reduce extreme competitiveness and jealous behavior between animals in a family, alleviates overbearing and selfish behavior, eases intolerance towards others, reduces the power struggle, and aids in acceptance of their rank in the pecking order. So again, sibling rivalry is for trouble between animals in a family and getting them used to being together in a way that's safe for all of the animals in the group. And sibling rivalry has in it a European beech, chicory, holly, dreza grass, which is also called quaking grass, quince, humboldt lily, and the common grapevine. And we have seen some of these particular flower essences in some of our other uh, flowers that we have, I mean, uh, our flower essences blends that we have looked at. So the first one we'll talk about in Sibling Rivalry. It's starting to rain again. I'm late this morning because it was raining and it's still promising to rain. We just can't get a break on doing these in the garden. And I really want to do one in the other garden because it's so beautiful. But here we are today. So the European beech has been called the goddess tree and it has been associated with strengthening your hair, hair growth, and the nuts on the beech tree are high in B6. And in famine, the leaves have been used for food because they aid digestion and they're high in fiber. And so if you're starving, beech tree leaves can make you feel satisfied and provide you with that B6. Um, the leaves of the beech have been used to decrease headaches and the bark is loaded with antioxidants. The seeds of the beech tree, however, are toxic. So um, they have not been used medicinally. Uh, but have been blended to help uh, boost kidney function and to clear out toxins, especially extra salts, waste, and water. So therefore the beech has been used as a diuretic. It helps metabolism increase and it prevents neural tube defects in infants. It has antiseptic qualities um, with the distilled bark and the roots have been known to increase the circulation of air in the soil and improve the growth of trees around it. So that idea of improving the trees around it, part of what sibling rivalry's mission is, is to promote group interaction and group happiness. And so that idea of the European beech being a good member of the tree community where it lives and promoting uh, growth and nitrogen and air in the soil for the trees around it is part of what you'd need in something called sibling rivalry. Um, the leaves stay on it over winter and that protects the little trees that are growing under it. Again, that idea of community, of helping others, comes through in the beech tree's natural processes. In the flower remedies, the beech tree enhances sympathy and tolerance, and it can signify um, that death or an ending, but that can also be transformation. So it promotes change through realization. So if you have, this is what I used sibling rivalry for. I had an old dog who was like 14 or 12 and I had Tristan <laughs> who was a scamp at um, two months old. And Comet was somewhat tolerant of him, but not really. And as we talk more about the flower essences in this blend, I will talk to you more about the difference between my first dog, Winston, training Comet when he was a puppy and Comet's behavior towards Tristan and Tristan's response, that was definitely part of it. So they need transformation through realization, crossing the threshold, um, seeing the relevance of experience, seeing how important it is for you to have that new dog in your life is something that the old dog needs to understand. Um, increased knowledge through experience of the unknown and revelation. So the beech tree is going to really be a good part of this blend to bring understanding to the dog or the cat 
that is not getting along with the others so that he can see the problems he's creating because really no animal wants to be the bad one. They all want to try to cooperate and be with us and the beech tree is going to help that dog or cat see what, or horse actually, I've used this for horses, um, see what he needs to do to change to be a better member of the group. The next aspect of sibling rivalry is the holly. And as we know, the holly has been associated with Christmas and it's been given at the solstice season for years. And it was also traced back to the times of the Druids and the pagans. And then, of course, in Christianity, we believe that the holly sprang from the footsteps of Christ and that the thorny leaves um, and the red berries represent um, Christ's suffering. And so, of course, the holly would be uh, associated with suffering. In the spring, it has small white flowers, and again, it has a male and a female plant, and you need both of them to create the berries. So a lot of the flower essences in sibling rivalry are associated with that idea of balancing masculine and feminine energies, and the holly is one of them that promotes this idea of balancing masculine and feminine. Um, it has been used as a diaphoretic as well, and the leaves of the holly are eaten by deer and sheep. The flower essence of holly has been known to heal the inner being and evoke um, a loving nature in the soul. So if you have an animal that is, you know, really not getting along with another one, he has lost that loving nature towards the other pets in the community, and he needs to restore that, and the holly will help him see that. A lot of these flower essences and sibling rivalry are related to the idea of love and misplaced love, misdirected love, not knowing how to love, and the flower essences in this blend help understand what true love is, and the holly is one of them. Um, it brings inner healing, and it has been associated with the month of June um, because that's when we start to transcend into darkness after the solstice on June 21st. We get darker and darker days. Of course, here in New England, where it's just been cloudy for weeks, we don't know if it's a darker light. But we are transcending downhill into the darkest day of the year now, December 21st. And then it will start to get light. So that light period of time from December to June is associated with the oak. So right now, from June on, we are in the holly season, no matter we know it or not. Um, and it's been associated with the underworld. So therefore, holly's been associated with the darkness and the moist conditions that it loves to grow in. And then it's also been associated with strength in the winter. And it, the holly is associated to bringing light in the winter. That's why we bring it indoors because it's green and it reminds us of spring. Um, and that's why it's been part of our holiday celebrations. So holly is especially for those attacked by thoughts of jealousy envy, revenge, suspicion, and those who have internal suffering without an obvious cause. Well, you think that dog is suffering because you brought a new puppy into the house, but really it's traced back to his early upbringing and his feelings of being a puppy. It's not about the actual puppy that you just brought into the house or the new dog that you brought into the house. It's about his feelings from when he was a puppy himself. So internal suffering is relieved by the holly. It also helps you acquire love and gentleness, um, and it repels strong negative states of anger. It breaks through that, uh, breaks it up, so that it can promote that love and gentleness. And it also uh, combats violence, a bad temper, frustration, and selfishness, and all states that are opposite of love and compassion. So the holly brings love and compassion back into this dog that needs sibling rivalry so that he can feel compassion for those who have come into his household. The next flower essence that is in sibling rivalry is the humble lily. And this one is orange. A lot of the ones in this blend are bright colors like the red holly berries and the orange of the humble lily. It looks a bit like a tiger lily. And the bulbs are edible and have a peppery flavor. And the humble lily has been used in stews. It also blooms in June, like the holly, and it has been used for swelling, wounds, coughs, and stomach disorders, and you can mash the bulbs, and they have been used to protect you from witchcraft. It helps regulate the heart. So, of course, on a physical level, the Humboldt lilies um, 
herbal parts have been used to make heart medications, but it's going to help regulate the heart so that that animal that needs sibling rivalry can f connect with his heart and find love in his heart for this other dog or cat in the house or horse in the pasture that he doesn't like and bring that back into balance. So the Humboldt lily relieves depression and brings security and it has a capacity to store water and live for a long time. And so it touches the origins, the beginnings of those buried feelings that are creating the sibling rivalry when you bring a new puppy into the house. And it, it restores the original pattern of what that dog was in utero before he came into the world and suffered and had a hard time. And that led to his being unable to get along with the new dog. It, brings you back to a time of innocence and purity and receptivity. That's the Humboldt Lily. It connects your body with the ability to enhance your creativity. So bringing you back to that innocent time is important when you're acting out with a bad character and snapping and barking and biting at the new dog in the house or the cats. So the Humboldt Lily is an important part of um, sibling rivalry. And the next one that's in sibling rivalry is the Oregon or common grape. And this is for the loving inclusion of others and it opens us to the ability to trust. It helps develop trust in yourself and trust in others and that's important because the dog that's acting out usually is not in touch with his good self. He, he has misdirected ability to engage with others. So it's important that we connect him with his good self so that he can then respond better to those around him. It restores hormonal balance and again as I said a lot of these uh, flower essences in sibling rivalry are to balance masculine and feminine energy and so balancing hormonal function is part of balancing that masculine and feminine energy. Um, it overcomes fears of emotional hostility by finding self-love and acceptance and self-nourishment. It develops emotional equilibrium. So then you can see what's going on in your environment and not snap at the puppy for every little thing that goes on that you don't like and start to take some responsibility for yourself. So you get that emotional equilibrium so that you can see what's really happening in your environment. It helps with feelings of being unloved and that is a key part of several of these flower essences that are in sibling rivalry. Feeling loved yourself so that you can love others. So it helps uh, with those who are paranoid, left out, self-critical, self-judging, and feeling like they're never good enough. So that's often what's going on with the perpetrator of the problems in your household. He does not feel loved or like he's good enough. It opens you to your unique nature and your own power, and it helps you not to give your power to others. So of course, if you're a dog and you're acting out and you're snapping at the other dog all the time, you're giving up your power in a way because then the people have to keep stepping in and breaking up the fight. So you have lost control of your life and your environment. Oregon grape will help with your self-value and it especially has been helpful for the gallbladder and the liver, which as we've said before, are areas that are associated with storing anger. So part of what the grape does is release some of that anger so that you can find self-love and find an ability to love others. And moving along, there are seven flower essences in sibling rivalry. We're getting up to chicory, which uh, has little blue flowers, many, many little petals in a circle. Um, and it's quite a beautiful little flower. And of course, we all know chicory is what we use for a coffee substitute. Um, and it is quite delicious. It a, makes a robust tea. <clears throat> so the chicory is for unconditional love. But in a negative state, that unconditional love is seen as domineering and demanding and a need to be in control, a need to be the focus of attention, and a need for continuous reassurance of the family's love. So that's what's going on when your dog is having issues with the new dog. He is in this state of looking for attention, domineering, trying to control things, looking for the family's love. And it's also that idea of negative attention is better than no attention. 
And that's really hard. If you're a person like me who lives alone and I have two dogs, I can't just say to the other person in the house, pet that one while I'm petting this one. I need to use all my parts to pay attention to both dogs. And a lot of people, you know, the puppy is so needy when you get a puppy. You have to take him in, you have to take him out. He has special food needs. You're so cute. He's picking it. You're picking him up and snuggling him all the time. And the old dog doesn't know that that is time that you're spending taking care of the puppy. He thinks that you're playing with him and loving him more than the old dog. And that is very hard for an old dog to adjust to sometimes. Although they can adjust and all mine have, but it hasn't always been easy. So um, constant crying, especially when left alone, is something that you'll see in the dog that's perpetrating the problem. And sometimes people end up separating them and then the dog that wants the attention, the old one that's causing the problem, ends up feeling even worse. So that usually doesn't help the problem and I'm sure many people would say that in fact when they've separated their dogs that has not really helped that much, although it keeps them from eating each other. Um, these kinds of dogs are ones that are prone to manipulation and bribery and flattery and pretending to be ill to get attention in humans. Um, these people seem to find pleasure in criticizing, commenting, and demanding of others. And so they're just like all over controlling the situation and the people around them. And that makes it hard for them to see what real love is because they're associating, I'm being helpful with criticizing, demanding, and commenting on the other's behavior continuously, as opposed to saying, I really love you, but you're not allowed to chew the sofa, so I'm going to bark you up. It has people um, that need chicory or dogs have an underlying sense of being unwanted and feeling unworthy because they can't find self-love. So I recommend if you have a situation where you need sibling rivalry flower essence that you spend some time with the dog that's causing the problem and let him know that you love him and that he is beautiful and he's magnificent and it's only because you love him so much that you got this new one who looks like him or you know remind you of him in some way and that's why you're bringing him into the household because they do feel really disrupted and often these are dogs that are insecure even before they have the new guy in the house flower essences for chicory can bring kindness warmth security great inner strength and those who need this are those who are continuing correcting everything they think is wrong often they lack love as children and they see their negative interference with others as a way to give and express love. And chicory has been associated with Scorpio, and Scorpio is associated with the two sides of good and evil, dark and light. And again, this is about balance, sibling rivalry, and so many of these flower essences are about balance, balancing the nervous system, balancing stress and peace, and balancing male and female, and dark and light, and anger and love. So Scorpio has these two sides and the good side of Scorpio is a limited ego and selfless devotion rather than the after all I've done for you how you how can you do this to me kind of attitude. So it's more like I'm going to do this because it makes me feel good not um, I'm doing this and I want you to pat me on the back. So a transcended Scorpio will be grateful for everything and thankful just to be helpful and they will not be looking for rewards and that same thing is going to apply to your dog that needs sibling rivalry as he transcends his domineering bossy controlling behavior he will start to become like a really magnificent creature with love and kindness and understanding that you did not think was possible before and as I said, these uh, kinds of dogs have often lacked a sense of love when they were younger themselves. Um, and they're often filled with self-pity. Chicory is helpful to clear loving pathways and respect the freedom of others. And that's exactly what you need when you have two dogs that aren't getting along in the household. You want the new one to respect the other one and to allow love to come between them because most puppies just want to love everyone that's around them even if they're rescued they are just waiting like every creature on the earth for love so <clears throat> next flower essence that's in sibling rivalry is breeze grass and it's also been called quaking grass and there are these long skinny little pieces of stem with like a little cluster of what looks like oats at the top and they're each coming off of their own little stem and they shiver together in the wind. 
And that's exactly what's going to happen when you've got a sibling rivalry problem in your house. You want the group to function as one and yet to still be separate individuals. And Breeze of Grass is for a harmonious community to be flexible and receptive, especially in group work. It's for those who have an inability to compromise and an overattachment to personal will and desire. So if you think everything's right all the time, you are overattached, or your way is always the right way or the highway, you are overattached to your will and not being uh, mindful of the group needs. And Breeze of Grass will help with that. It helps balance social consciousness and helps you find a higher identity in a group and find the identity of the whole group rather than your personal identity. So you sacrifice your personal needs and wants for the needs and wants of the group while still being who you are fully as yourself. It's for those who have trouble compromising and for those who need to see the needs of the group as more important than their personal needs. It's best if it's used by all members of the group. So of course you're gonna use sibling rivalry for all members of the household. If you have two dogs not getting along and you also have two cats that do seem fine, everyone in the house is gonna need the sibling rivalry because it's gonna unify the group and bring the group together as a group. So there will be no longer these personal identities conflicting for power. It creates flexibility in group work and helps you be receptive to the needs of others and find an ability to compromise. And it looks like an oat, as I said, and there's a little cluster at the top that are all individuals, but that are still quaking in the breeze as a group. The last component of sibling rivalry flower essence is the quince. And I love quince jam and it has beautiful bright pink flowers that are what we use to make the flower essence for quince. Tristan, what are you looking at, buddy? And quince is for loving strength, and again, as I said, integrating masculine power with feminine nurturing. So that dog that's creating the problems or so seems to be creating the problems in your house needs to balance the nurturing with the I'm right stuff. And that's what quince does. It helps for those who have an inability to reconcile power and tenderness and affection. It's for dysfunctional parenting and dysfunctional leadership behavior. It's for those who have an inability to blend power with loving and tenderness and for those who are too dominant or unable to assert themselves in a healthy way. So they, you know, instead of just barking at the puppy to get him away from his toy, he continues to attack him. And the quince is going to help him know when one bark is enough and to keep him from uh, resorting to violence to get what he thinks is the right way. And to also see that, oh, well, I have another toy over here I like just as much. Maybe I'll go get that one because the puppy's chewing on my new one. So it helps you integrate the energy of the heart and the solar plexus. So the solar plexus is associated with will and the heart is associated with tenderness. And again, your solar plexus is here and your heart is here and you want those to be working together, not in conflict. If you have a problem with sibling rivalry in your household, then you have too much will, too much solar plexus and not enough heart in some of the critters that are causing the trouble. It helps align your heart with your mind and it calms your own inner conflict. So again, the the perpetrator of the sibling problems usually has an inner conflict of their own, a sense of feeling unworthy, unloved, unwanted. You know, maybe you love that puppy from the minute you got him initially, but he was the last one in the litter and he wasn't thriving and maybe he didn't get as much attention. Um, or maybe he was the second to the troubled little guy in the litter and he didn't get attention because all the attention was being um, for the littlest one that was struggling the most. So your dog may not have felt loved when he was little and that's why he's acting out and not loving the new puppy. And so Quince helps you realize that true power comes from love and true love brings you immense power. And again, it balances the yin and the yang, the nurturing and the strength and power, um, the feminine and the masculine. So I'll tell you some stories about when I have used sibling rivalry um, and, my, and my experience with my two dogs. I always get a new dog when my other dog is getting pretty old because I can't imagine a day in my life without a corgi. And Tristan's so little. 
So when I had Winston Corgi, he was a great leader in a way that was wonderful when I got my puppy Comet. Comet was a very big puppy and he grew to be about 10 pounds bigger than Winston. Winston was sort of a medium sized 25 pound Corgi and at his full might Comet was well up to 34 pounds and he was a very big dog. He looked like a Cardi, although he was a Pembroke. And so Winston was really interesting in his parenting mode with Comet. I spent a lot of time telling Winston that he was going to get a little brother and that it was really important for him to train the little brother and that I really needed him to stay on the earth plane until the little brother was a very good boy and that that would take a long time because our new little brother was very naughty <laughs> and that our little brother was growing really fast and he was going to be very big and it was very important that Winston teach him right and wrong from the start. And Comet was a rescue. He had come from a situation where he was in a crate that was way too small and he was way too big and his poop and his pee and his food were all over him and he just had no sense of tidiness, no sense of what goes where. And so he had a lot of issues, but he was a sweet and loving dog. So that's why I have him or had him. So Winston was the most remarkable caretaker of this puppy. I would be in the kitchen doing something and Winston would come in and give me a certain bark like rough, rough, rough and I'd know right away the puppy was doing something naughty. So I'd run in the living room and see what was going on and the puppy would have a piece of the rug and be ripping at it or he would be getting, looking, sniffing around for a place to pee because he had no sense of going indoors and outdoors. It took a long time for Comet to learn that business is done outside and fun and sleep and food are done inside. So one of the things that Comet liked to do was go into the laundry basket and get some of the dirty socks and undies and strew them about the house. And sometimes he would just take one sock and hide it under the sofa and then pull it out to play with it throughout the day. Now, of course, we know that those items also contain a lot of our scent and they're very appealing to a dog, especially one like Comet who had never really been loved, hadn't really been held um, emotionally or physically. And so he loved to pull my stuff out of the laundry basket and Winston would always come running into the kitchen and bark at me and say, the puppy's got the socks, the puppy's got the socks, he's hiding the sock. And I would get the sock and scold the puppy and say, no socks for you and give him a toy that he was allowed to have. And so this is how it proceeded. And Winston was also able to teach Comet how to retrieve. The very first day I took them out to the park and I threw a stick for Winston to bring to me. He waited for Comet to grab the end and he pulled the puppy back to me to show him that when you throw a stick, you bring it back. So uh, Winston also taught Comet how to alert me when one of my clients was gonna have a seizure. And later when I had seizures, Comet learned from Winston how to tell me that I was gonna have a seizure. So Winston did a lot of wonderful things with Comet. He really taught him how to be the best dog that I would ever need. And sadly, Winston got DM, and really when he was at his absolute worst is when about the time Comet became fully as wonderful a dog as Winston had always been. And they were very close. I was really concerned when Winston crossed the Rainbow Bridge, what would happen to Comet. So Comet and Winston's other little quirky friend, Molly, sat with his body at the emergency animal clinic that we used to have that was so wonderful for nearly a whole day before I took Winston to go to get cremated. And so um, I think that that was really important time for Comet and, and Molly to understand that Winston had passed and that their jobs in life were gonna really be changing. And that's what happens when you bring a new animal into the house, whether it's a cat among dogs or a dog with cats or whatever, the roles of those who live there are changing. So when I got baby Tristan, and I brought Comet with me to pick him out and you know, he seemed okay with him. I remember when I got baby Comet, Winston was chagrined and just ran to the car and sat there and he said, I want nothing to do with this business with this puppy. <laughs> and yet Winston being a very loyal and wonderful dog quickly took on the job of raising Comet. Comet, however, did want no part at all in raising Tristan. They played together well but there was a lot of snarking about me and if I had two treats and they both went to the left hand and nobody wanted the treat on the right hand, there was a little bit of a snark then. And Tristan was very little and Comet was very big and you know, Tristan just idolized Comet. He was like beautiful and big and magnificent to him. And you know, he had come from a home with lots of corgis. So to have Comet was really important and he really loved him and respected him. But Comet 
Unlike Winston, never told me when Tristan was doing anything naughty. He didn't want to train Tristan to do anything. Um, to this day, Tristan is not as good a retriever as all of my other corgis have been because Comet sort of fought with him to get the stick instead of helping him retrieve the stick. Initially, Comet did try to teach Winston or Tristan to retrieve. Um, and I do have a wonderful picture of the two of them carrying a seashell down the beach to me. And I hadn't thrown it or anything, but Comet liked to pick up seashells and bring them to me. And it's a beautiful shell. I still have it. And uh, he did have Tristan helping him then. But Tristan has not been the kind of retriever that my other dogs have been. He just, he, he'll get the stick sometimes and sometimes he doesn't bother. He does like to retrieve squeaky toys, however, which is not a two-person job. And in terms of house training and things, you know, Tristan was very easy because he came from a really good family and he's a pretty easygoing dog. And Comet did do wonderful things like save Tristan when he was being attacked by two other dogs that are now our friends when he was a little puppy. But it was not the same um, as it was with Comet. And one of the things Comet did not teach Tristan to do very well or very thoroughly was to work in my um, work as a craniosacral therapist. And Winston had actually given Comet second choice on where to work and barked him up if he picked the wrong spot and would move him around. And Comet would just continue to work with me and allow Tristan, who was a puppy, to do whatever he wanted. And so again, Tristan didn't have the benefit of someone showing him how to be. And sibling rivalry was really important because I could see things were escalating early on when I got them. And the sibling rivalry flower essence in their water really helped them learn to get along better. And I think Comet was really unwilling to accept the fact that Tristan was gonna come into my life and be my only dog for a long time before I got another one. And Comet, I had to get Tristan when Comet wasn't that old because his DM started earlier than Winston's and Comet was probably, he died when he was 16, I think uh, Comet might have been 11 or 12 when I got Tristan. And so um, it was a little different. Winnie was quite a bit older when I got the puppy and he fully understood that he needed to take care of that puppy for me. Whereas Comet really, from the start, saw that Tristan was a uh, competition for my attention. Although, when I brought Comet to get Tristan at the Corgi Farm in New Jersey, um, Comet loved him from the start. He liked all other dogs. He liked Tristan's mother, his father, all the puppies. He, you know, he really seemed tolerant of him until he realized that he was going to live with us and be competing for my attention and my time. Um, and luckily, Tristan was a really good puppy. He was very easy to train to do his business outdoors, and he's been really easy to train to be a seizure alert dog. And, you know, he's been, he's very smart, and he's very like Winston in a lot of ways. But, boy, I needed the sibling rivalry then. I've also used sibling rivalry um, for horses that have new pasture mates and they aren't getting along. And in some cases, this can be very dangerous because horses are big and if they start kicking each other, you can find some injuries that are really a problem. And I've used the sibling rivalry in the water buckets of all of the horses that are in the same pasture to help them get along, especially when you're moving to a new farm or taking horses in or out of the pasture um, and moving them around. You know, sometimes they, they, the pastures get thin and they want to take some of the horses out. You can also put a little bit on a piece of apple and give that to all of the horses in the pasture and then you know that they're all getting it because you know the water buckets are big and it's very dilute and they're often dirty and not all of the horses drink out of them and sometimes you have electric waterers and they splash it. So to make sure the horses get it, I often will put a bit of sibling rivalry on a treat for all of the horses that have to share a pasture uh, once a day. And I sure wish it had been invented when I had my two horses. Again, Burgers was my first horse. Well, like my third horse, but he was my original horse at the time. And I got Hawk and they were turned out together and they seemed to play. Burgers never really took to other horses that much. If you read my book, you'll see he was a seeing eye horse for one horse, but he had very few friends in his life. And Hawk certainly wasn't really one of his friends. They played really rough and you could see that Hawk was kind of running for his life when Burgers came after him and it wasn't pleasant and certainly sibling rivalry would have been a great flower essence to have at the time to help Burgers be kinder to Hawk and part of it was Burgers had a hard childhood. He, nobody really wanted him. He was a nice horse but he had some other horses that um, people liked better that were in his group. He had an older brother 
that um, stayed with his mother for a long time and there were a lot of issues and of course I wrote him with his older brother in Pas de Deux for years and sibling rivalry would have helped us then too because they both had a bit of a grudge towards each other as brothers because they were pastured together with their mother for a very long time and she didn't do a good job of making them work and play well with others. So sibling rivalry can be really helpful in your household whether you have cats or dogs or horses. Um, I haven't had a problem with my rabbits getting along, but if you have rabbits, I'm sure it would be useful too. So sibling rivalry is for jealous behavior and competitiveness. And it's also for helping reduce extreme competitiveness between animal members in a family, alleviates overbearing and selfish behavior, eases tolerance towards other, reduces the power struggle, and aids in acceptance of their rank in the pecking order. And I just want to point out one more thing about the pecking order issue. A lot of people for years thought that there was a dominance, a hierarchy in the pack of the dogs or cats or animals in the household. And uh, a guy that I know, I've spoken to him on the phone named David Meech. He wrote a book I loved called Never Cry Wolf. And he had studied wolves in Michigan on an island for years. And he'd also gone to Alaska. There was a movie that came out in the 70s about him studying wolves. And he had actually, there was a great scene where he was eating a mouse sandwich to see if an animal as big as a wolf could survive on mice in the winter. And in fact, they can. But his original research showed that, and from his perspective, that there was a lot of fighting to maintain dominance and to be the pack leader. And then there was the alpha and the beta and then the theta and then the females were dominant or less dominant than the males. Well, he has recanted all of that earlier research and said that the wolves he was working with were not from a family pack. There were, because this was an island and it froze and thawed, a lot of the wolves had either been placed there or had wandered there and they were not all really one pack. They weren't in the same true family dynamics that we see now with the wolves that have been reintroduced to Yellowstone. So he really regrets his earlier flawed research because of the damage it's done to the dog world and the dog training world because of this idea of dominance and alpha rolling. All of that stuff is based on his original poor research by his own admission. It is highly stressful to be in charge all the time as anyone knows who's been a boss. Um, and so it's not in an, especially a dog, they're cooperative animals. It's not in their nature to want to be in charge all the time because it is, it is so stressful you will die. So in fact, a pack is a cooperative unit and only chimps are combative like we are. Bonobos, which are another one of our relatives, um, they look like little black monkeys. They are actually a matriarchal society and they're very cooperative and they have even been known to do things like raise abandoned chimps. So we are uh, somewhere in the middle there, but dogs are much more like bonobos. And so sibling rivalry is gonna help your dogs find their place in the pack. If you've got one that's being really bossy, he's trying to take charge. And taking charge is very stressful and difficult and leads to illness. And it, it really will wear him out and just accelerate his naughty behavior. So it's not a matter of dominating that dog that's taking too much control in the household when you've got a new dog or some other dogs coming or some new kitties or something like that. It is really more a matter of him feeling neglected and unloved as a child, and this is bringing up his own issues, and we all know what that's like in people. So you need to love him and embrace him and give him what you would have given him when he was a cute little puppy if you had him or if you knew what his life was like at the time when he was little. So it's really important to understand that it is not about dominance. It is about cooperation for dogs, and every dog is seeking a cooperative situation. That's not to say that some might not be more bossy than others, just like people, but they really don't want to be in charge all the time. It's highly stressful and you could be killed if you were in charge all the time in the wolf or dog world. So think about that when you're deciding to get sibling rivalry as a flower essence to use with your pets. So this has been Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi, who's an only child now. <laughs> And this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi where we have talked about the sibling rivalry flower essence from Botanical Animal. I highly recommend getting it before you get the new puppy just to make things smoother as things go along. 
and it has been really powerful. My sister has used it a lot and seen really good results with it. And it can be the occasional outburst. It doesn't have to be dogs uh, grumpy at each other all the time. It can just be around dinner time with resource guarding or something like that. The sibling rivalry can help smooth things over in your household and help your pets and you get along better. And in fact, I do recommend if you're really stressed from the situation going on with your dogs that you use sibling rivalry yourself. That flower essence that's in here that mentioned that it's good for the whole group of the community to use it. Um, is a serious thing. So even if it's two dogs not getting along and you have some kitties in your house, I would recommend getting it to your kitties as well. And it's best to put a bit on a treat rather than putting it in their dinner. It is a homeopathic thing and it can get distorted a little if it's going in with digestion with a big meal. So it's best to put it on a little treat or um, put it in their water if you have animals that drink regularly um, from something. You know, I, I've had a cat that used to drink out of just a little like a Coke bottle lid. If I put something in there, she would drink it. So that would have been a perfect way to use a flower essence. So this is Sally Morgan. We are going back to the beach tomorrow morning, me and Tristan. And so I don't know when we'll be back for conversations with a Corgi. I do have a few new things I want to show you that are really exciting to me. And I want to talk to you about a couple of things. So I am hoping to connect with you again on Sunday morning. I'm not sure what time, <laughs> but we'll be back at the beach. So. Um, have a great day. It's starting to rain again, and hopefully in your neighborhood it's sunny. The good news is we are in no danger of a drought anymore. All of the water that we lost last year has been restored, plus some, so that we could even withstand a drought next year. So that's the good news. All right, have a good day, everyone, and we'll see you soon.